Hi everyone, I'm Ski Okafor, broadcasting live from Point Blank Music School in East London. Welcome to this very special EMC session in the Academy of Electronic Music, brought to you by Google, Armada Music, DJ Mag and Point Blank. I'm course developer and tutor at Point Blank, and I'm putting the seven winners and you through your paces on the Electronic Music Composition course via this series of exclusive hangouts. If you like what you see in these EMC hangouts <clears throat> and would like to enrol on a full course, head on over to www.pointblankonline.net forward slash electronic dash music dash composition. As an Academy viewer, you can claim a 10% discount off the course fees with this code. So, we're in the final week of the Electronic Music Academy. We've had lots of interesting guests and activities so far, and the last week is certainly no exception, with massive special guest BT appearing tomorrow, and Armin van Buren vocalist and songwriter Christian Burns joining us on Thursday, both at 3pm UK time. Today, we're kicking off the final week of the Academy by focusing on arranging tracks, which for many producers is often the hardest part. We will look at the most effective way to use Viv May's vocal, which we recorded live on air last week. We'll analyse the structures of some big selling tracks to use as possible templates. And we've got the winner's remixes of Viv's, Viv's a cappella to look forward to as well. So I think we should uh, kick off and uh, just want to say hi to the guys. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? You all right? Hey. 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 It's the last week. I can't believe how quickly it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super. <laughs> and it's so nice to have, uh, have you along as well, Ramon, because uh, you weren't with us on Friday for the recording session, were you? Yeah, oh, my, my internet was broken. I don't, I, I don't know. It was defect. My PC is uh, yeah. freezing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, well, you know, we, we were working, just to remind everyone, we were working on your uh, instrumental, instrumental that you sent, and yeah. Viv, May, Viv May came in and... Uh, and yeah, we, uh, we it was a great session. So, um, we're yeah, gonna... well, it's thanks about it. Uh, I feel it and uh, really nice. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Um, well, I just firstly, I just want to go through, um, you know, how I kind of went about just uh, editing and pitching uh, and kind of mixing the vocal. My plan really was to just create an a cappella. Um, you know, what you sent me was sort of, you know, it was a, sounded pretty finished instrumental, but I was treating it as a demo and the idea was to create an acapella that I could upload and send to you guys to do some remixes, which is uh, what's happened. So, um, I mean, it was actually kind of quite a good way of working as well. And I, I was using Logic uh, as the platform to record the vocal in, but I then decided to take it into Ableton just to kind of have a different, fresh perspective on the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and, uh, with you guys so you can see what's going on. And uh, I'm just going to head over to Logic. Here we go. Can you see that, guys? Um, yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. OK. Yes. So um, pretty much this is what I ended up with at the end of the session. Um, pretty messy, loads of tracks. We, you know, we, really, we really tracked up the vocal. Um, you know, with some harmonies and uh, double tracks and ad libs and that kind of thing. Um, and you can see I've got on, on the lead vocal here, just in this kind of first section, uh, I use Logic's take recording as well. And uh, if I just kind of give that a quick play. Uh, I think I, I sort of did a bit of rough comping as I went along, but uh, after we'd finished, I sort of came to this and then started uh, choosing you know, the best lines of, the, of uh, you know, of each uh, section. Um, now, you know, it was, it was, we were sort of under pressure in the session and, um, you know, there was some of the, we just didn't have time to kind of do lots and lots of takes. Uh, so some of the pitching was just a little bit off, even though Viv's a fantastic singer. I mean, to be honest, I've, you know, I've worked with loads of vocalists and no one ever gets it right first time, you know, unless you've really got time to kind of get it right, you know, it's, it's very difficult. So um, I wanted to get this, this vocal kind of sounding as, as, you know, good and perfect as possible. So um, that's where Logic comes in uh, with the new flex pitch feature. It's um, pretty similar to Melodyne, which is something I've been using for a good few years. Um, and yeah, I've really started getting into it actually. So uh, but what I found with take recording uh, is in order to get it to work, I had to use flatten and merge. So once I'd actually uh, comped together the vocal, I then sort of I flattened it and merged it so it was just sort of like one single audio file. And then uh, you can get flex pitch to work. So um, I'm going to uh, basically 
It's a bit like you know one I prepared earlier. I'm going to go over to uh, my an alternate version, which is post flex pitch, and uh, just sort of show you how I've organised this. Um, so, like I said, there were lots of takes. Uh, what I wanted to do is create a um, a lead vocal kind of group, and a backing vocal group, and then an ad lib group. And this is where uh, Logic's track stacks come in, summing stacks. Um, you can do uh, s the same thing in Ableton just by grouping grouping tracks together. Um, so the first one I created was uh, the lead vocal, and this was basically just one kind of comp of the lead. But then in the the sort of the last bridge and chorus, she double tracked it, so I included that as well. And what this allows you to do uh, is to um, group these two tracks. Uh, together, and then you can put some compression on, reverb, EQ, um, and you can t treat it all as one. Uh, and I'm just going to double click on this, for example, this first verse here, and you can see uh, this is the flex pitching I've done. So, uh, so I had this as the lead vocal, and then I've got the backing vocals. Let's just close this track stack here. There we go. And these are all grouped. Uh, into this one summing stack here and uh, if I just show you the mixer what I did there was that I added some panning so sort of trying to kind of stereo it out I'll just solo that now so you can hear what that sounds like Bender. we choose to surrender da, da, da. and this is all coming up through one summing stack which uh, I've got some compression on Bender. And um, we choose to surrender. Some EQ. Da, da, da. I tend to kind of roll off some of the bottom end with backing vocals, um, brighten up as well. I didn't actually brighten up too much on here because she's got quite a bright sounding voice, but um, I often quite like backing vocals to kind of cut through. And, um, and uh, also some reverb as well. We choose to surrender. So, what that means by putting those backing vocals uh, through. Uh, it, its own sort of group, it just and then compressing it, it just kind of glues it all together because you're going to get quite kind of varying levels, and uh, it just makes it much easier to mix. And you can, you know, you can solo it, mute it, and just treat it as a as a track, you know, in its own right. So uh, let's just have a quick listen. Um, like I said, I did some work with the flex pitch, lost in and I just tried to get it as good as possible. Straight after the session, I kind of uh, went in and did some work on it. It got to about half past five and I had to go home. And I thought, well, I'll finish it off when I get back. And uh, my ears were a bit tired. I, I um, got home, I sort of was working on headphones. And, but I knew I wanted, to, I wanted to get it to you guys uh, as soon as possible so you could get working on the remix. Um, but when I listened to it the next day, I was a bit. I thought, oh no, I've missed. I've missed it a little bit. There's a few lines I think are still a bit kind of out of tune. And um, what I actually discovered was that it's. I found it easier to actually work on pitch tuning um, just off some laptop speakers. On headphones, it's quite difficult to tell with with um, with tuning. Whereas if you're if you're listening on laptop speakers or maybe just some small small speakers, it's kind of a more of a MIDI sound, um, and you can really kind of focus on on the pitch. So. Um, I did a little bit more work and uh, I think it's sounding pretty good. Lost in You're on the wrong side. I just have a quick flick through, I'm not going to play the whole thing. Take your places, put up your armor, pick your target, hold your guard up, keep your heart safe, use your head and push them far away and don't you surrender. I really like the backing vocals here. So um, that's what I did, and then I just um, muted the backing tracks and just exported the lead vocal with the, with the backing vocals. Uh, I just went to bounce and uh, project or section, and that just allowed me to bounce that down. Uh, I made sure that it was starting at the start of a bar. I started at two, two bars actually before the vocal started. So I, exported, I, I created uh, one kind of main vocal 
I did a, I um, gave a reverb, one with sort of wet a reverb on it, and one with dry as well. And then also exported an, some an ad lib track as well, which uh, I thought might be quite useful because you could maybe take some of the ad libs that she did and treat them as samples, that kind of thing. So um, that's what I did. Now um, the next thing to do is to think about the arrangement. Uh, it's like, like I said before, it's kind of often the hardest thing, you know, uh, you can kind of have all these great kind of sections, but like how do you, how do you put it all together uh, into a finished track? And uh, as with the deconstructions, often a good way to start is just by analysing um, other tracks and seeing what kind of arrangements pe other people are using. So I'm going to uh, bring up another project here and uh, I've taken three tracks. Two of them we've worked on, I've done deconstructions on uh, already. First is the Armin van Buren, Waiting for the Night. Um, the second one is the Florence and the Machine Spectrum, Calvin Harris remix. And then, just because I heard it in the car this morning, uh, Disclosure featuring Sam Smith, uh, Latch. Beautiful track, amazing cause. I, I'd love to do a deconstruction of that sometime. Um, and what I've done is, uh, I've, they're all at different tempos, so I've actually used uh, Logic's uh, tempo uh, track here, just to kind of change the tempos. But what I wanted to do is sync it up so that I can basically mark out the sections. And there's a couple of ways you can do that in Logic. You can use markers, you can also, also use the new arrangement markers as well. Um, but what I wanted to do is just chop up the sections. Um, and then just kind of uh, colour the sections and then uh, actually kind of write in what they're called as well. So just to give you an example, this is the first one, Armin van Buren, Waiting for the Night. We've got this uh, intro here. And then it comes up to the first verse. Then it comes up to the chorus. And I've tried to come up with names. This, this section here is, um, I call it a tag, because it's not, you know, I mean, just to kind of get, get back to basics, uh, the chorus or the refrain is normally the, the sort of the catchiest part. You know, dynamics-wise, it's the bit that kind of rises up. It's the bit you kind of really, really uh, remember, and generally the chorus stays the same throughout the song. Uh, with verses, um, normally verses are different lyric-wise, um, but they kind of come down. Uh, that could be uh, harmonically uh, or just with instrumentation, but you're generally kind of rising up to the chorus. Now there's all obviously variations on that, um, but even with the most kind of, uh, I don't know, complex, minimal, techie, non-vocal track, you can still apply this kind of classic arrangement technique to that uh, when you're thinking about dynamics and structure. Um, so just going back to this, um, we have our verse, chorus, then there's like a kind of little instrumental section, break, and then it comes back to the second verse. Now this is a completely classic technique when it comes to second verse, is basically bring the drums out for the first four, eight bars, or bring some kind of new element in. Um, you know, it, it acts as a sort of, uh, as, a, as a release really. You know, you've had this kind of big chorus section and it comes down to the second verse. And you can see that Armin's done this here. He's brought in this kind of daft punky type arpeggiated riff as well, which is like a new element. And it's gradually building up again dynamically. Interestingly, he kind of holds off with the beat coming in for the chorus as well. And uh, we're going to look at the, at the Calvin Harris remix in a minute because he does, he employs that kind of technique. So what I've also done is I've written out the chords, uh, not the chords, sorry, the sections here. So I've just uh, counted them basically and uh, into bars. Um, just to remind you, a bar, if you count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, every set of four beats is one bar. Uh, and it's pretty common with arrangements that um, they're arranged in kind of blocks of four. So you can see here we have four bars intro, then a 16 bar verse, that actually should, should say verse one there, uh, then 16 bar chorus, then eight bar tag. And, you know, if, if we look at that, there's, there's going to be some similarities when we look at the next one. So let's have a look at uh, the Calvin Harris remix here. 
Now this one, he just doesn't mess about, he just goes straight into the verse. So here we go. So there's no kind of beat intro. I mean, obviously I'm talking about, these are radio edits, um, but I think there's a real art to a radio edit because it's, there's that sort of old adage of don't bore us, get to the chorus. You know, you want to have the maximum impact when someone hears, hears your track. Obviously you can do a club version, um, you know, you can, you can extend it out. Obviously you can have a, like a long kind of intro, beat intro, but I just want to look at um, radio edits for the moment. So we have our verse one. Now, even though the track, they sort of renamed it, like, Say, say My Name. This is acting like a chorus, but there's a real build-up. So I've called it the bridge. And when it comes in here, it bangs in with the chorus. And... Um, yeah, I mean, the, Calvin Harris does this quite a lot. I've, uh, there's the, the track that he did um, with Florence, his own track, and it's exactly the same kind of technique. You know, he has the, it's almost like the, the, the section after the verse is the chorus, but he really holds back and builds into this kind of release section. Um, so I'll just bring up the uh, arrangement for this. Here we go. And uh, yeah, we've got another 16 bars verse and um, we've got eight bar bridge, 16 bar chorus, 16 bar verse, bridge, chorus. So you can see this kind of common um, arrangement uh, structure that's coming up. And let's have a quick look at the, uh, the last track, which is this disclosure tune. And this is kind of similar actually to uh, the Armin Van Buren. There's a kind of intro, a beat intro. Double the length this time. Going into the verse. And then a similar thing, it kind of comes down for the bridge. It's all about the tension. Really kind of building up to this chorus. coming into the release here. And that really is a bass line. So this time the beat doesn't come out, it kind of stays back in, but you can still hear that it's kind of coming back down, it's settling back down. So um, these are all just classic techniques. Uh, let me just quickly show you uh, the arrangement for that. There we go, up on the screen. So again, um, all sort of like blocks of four, so it's like eight bar intro, 16 bar verse, 16 bar bridge, 16 bar chorus, which is actually like the chorus times two, and then at the end it's 24 bars, which is the chorus times three. So um, these, are, these are structures that are really worth keeping in mind. And now I'm gonna shoot over to the track that we did with Viv, and uh, I've done my own kind of version of a radio edit. And we're going to see, uh, you know, that it's kind of similar to, to a lot of these tracks. So um, I'm just going to quit Logic, and we're now going over to Ableton, if it will load up for me. Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, it's obviously it's um, we can we could think about a a club version, and a lot of the tracks that that you guys, the winners of, of Centina, are, are like kind of thinking in those kind of seven, eight minute terms, you know, those kind of longer tracks. But um, I think, especially when you're working with a vocal, it's, it's better to think in more sort of song terms. And then once you've, once you've actually um, got the kind of three and a half, four minute version, it's actually much easier then to kind of extend it out. Um, so uh, Ramon sent me, uh, before we did the session, he sent me uh, an extended version of his track, because originally it was just a sort of a minute and a half. Um, that's that's the, the sort of section that Viv uh, wrote the vocal over. And then he sent me an extended version, but we didn't really kind of use that. We just, I just sort of had it lying there. But um, in order to kind of piece this together, uh, I have used some elements from his extended version. Um, so as you can see, I've got uh, Ableton here. I've got the two acapellas. This is the um, main lead and BV acapella. 
Push them far away. And it's quite nice just dealing with one audio file, kind of stereo mix of, you know, it just makes it kind of much easier to move things around. Um, I quite like the fact we're working in a different door as well. Uh, and then we've got the BV um, track as well. Uh, so I'm going to play it to you. Um, see what you think. Uh, I'm kind of, it starts off with the intro. I'm not sure if you can see this, um, but it starts off with the intro. I've kind of called the first bit of verse one, then a bridge, and then a chorus. So um, I'm just going to play it to you and uh, see how it hangs together. I think it's about three and a half minutes. So here we go. I kind of wanted to bring in this hook at the start. We're just like soldiers lost in war. You're on the wrong side, drowning in. Could have skipped this bit here, think of a radio edit, but I just love the build up into what I've called the bridge section, which is coming up here. Take your places, put up your armor, pick your target, hold your guard. This is where I've changed it, just coming up to this chorus here. I decided just to bring everything in the beat. Production-wise, maybe Ramon maybe kind of like build the beat more into that chorus section. So remember, I introduced this hook here right at the start, which I think is a good technique, especially radio-wise. I used a few of the BVs here just for this little kind of instrumental section after the first chorus. And then I, this is where I took a different section from the extended mix. And I called this verse two. Same lyric. It might, it might be nice to get some different lyrics here, but I think it works pretty well. We're kind of keeping the energy here. I didn't want to bring it down too much because once the beat's in, it felt like it really needed to kind of keep going. But then we're coming down here for the bridge. And then slamming back in with the chorus again. I'm employing a few more of the BVs here. And then we just get into kind of nice outro section here. So this could be a fade, but um just use a couple of the BVs here. I just had a little bit of a big kind of uh, kick at the end. So um, that is, I mean, I, I just sort of put that together um, just before today's session. I didn't spend ages o over it, but uh, I just kind of used the template that I got from analysing those other tracks. You know, pretty simple, um, just kind of having the, you know, the verse, bridge, chorus, instrumental break, bridge, uh, sorry, verse, two, bridge, chorus, outro. You know, pretty simple. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, R Ramon, uh, you haven't sort of sent me, you haven't sent me anything with this a cappella yet, so uh, it might be nice to 
certainly bear this in mind. And uh, the task for all of you today um, is to come up with a radio edit, a three and a half minute version of your winning tracks. Just see if you can be really ruthless, really brutal, and just try to kind of uh, compact it down. And it's a case of choosing what you think are the most important elements. I know that I think all the tracks are instrumentals, but that doesn't matter. It still means you can, you can look at your track in terms of sections. You know, you can still call it verse one, chorus, verse two, bridge, or whatever. But just really try to sort of think about the dynamics. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, shoot back to you guys and um, Ramon. Yeah. Um, is it, are you, uh, have you been working on the track yourself? Uh, no, I was uh, very busy uh, <laughs> at this weekend. Uh, I have to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Well, but you've... I will do. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so, look, I'm going to, I think we've got a bit of time left. I want to have a listen to uh, the remixes that you guys sent in. Um, so, let's just load up um, Project. Um, actually, before I do that, there was one comment. Um, someone wanted to know about your arpeggio. Uh, Ramon, they loved your arpeggio. So, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm in the strange situation of deconstructing one of your tracks now. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll play. I'll play the part. Um, you know, let me just get back to live. There we go. Uh, it's this one here. Mm -hmm. I've just used a kind of uh, a stock Ableton sound here. Um, what was the sound you used? Was it a silent or a massive or something? Um, I think that is massive, a lead sound. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I can't play it very well. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play it in yourself? Yeah, of course. A uh, lot of melodies I play itself. I love the movement because um, you've got the bottom, the bottom note is kind of changing, isn't it, with the chord. So it's, the key signature is A minor. Yeah. So you're starting on, on this F here, which is the sixth chord, and then going to A, which is the one chord. And then you're going down to the G, which is the seven chord. And then down to the D. And the kind of the, the delay that you've got on it, was that, was that a delay that you put as an external effect or was that kind of built into the sound? Because it gives it a lot of kind of funk. Yeah, uh, it's an external effect uh, from Fuji Loops. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's working really, really well. Oh, cool. So, uh, cool. Well, um, maybe, maybe you can provide that as a MIDI file or something to kind of, uh, you know, because obviously it was, yeah. getting, it was getting a lot of respect and interest. So. Um, Cool. Well, uh, I'm going to load up uh, the remixes that I've got, all kind of really varied and different um, and, uh, and great, actually. And the first one I'm going to play is the Adoriani track. Um, it's, I, I, I'll, I, I, it's so good, I want to sort of play the whole thing, but maybe we'll kind of play a couple of minutes of it. But um, let's go from the start. Here we go. So uh, this is the uh, Adrian and Vlad uh, remix. So Lost in war, you're on the wrong side. Drowning in orders, lost in words, I'm on the wrong side. Take your Says, put up your armor, pick your target, hold your guard up, keep your heart safe, use your head and push them far away, and don't you surrender, don't you surrender.
<laughs> so I'm going to have to stop it there because we're pushed for time. But um, that's that's wonderful, guys. Really good. Um, I, I really like what you've done with the, the vocal, the way you've processed it, that you've EQ'd it, and it just sounds so kind of bright and present. Did you did you work a lot on the yes. vocal? We used the drive vocal. We used also the EQ, some compression, yeah. reverbs and delays, and we make it sound more present, more powerful. Did you did you do any more mix. did you do any more tuning to it at all? Yes, yeah. uh, a little bit. Yeah, I thought so because, like I said, you know, I, what I gave you is what I, you know, the tuning that I did on the on the Friday, and uh, I was kind of a bit disappointed the next day. I th thought I could have done a slightly better job. So no, I, I, I can really hear that you've worked on that as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so excellent. Uh, cool. Well, let's play uh, Piccolo's track, um, and this is a completely different vibe. Just wanted to go on further, <laughs> go longer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, you know, it's great. It's so kind of epic sounding. Um, my my kind of uh, only worry is just the tuning of the vocal at the end. You know, I think yeah. it just could be a little bit better, which is why, um, yeah, I I sort of contacted you just before and said, oh, send me over instrumental, and I'll send you over <laughs> kind of like the new acapella. So I'll send that to you anyway. But um, that's a great job, fantastic. Thanks. Cool. And we've just got one more to go. Um, which is uh, this one, Edwin and Gabriel Lovato. Here we go. Soldiers, lost in war, you're on the wrong side. Drowning in orders, lost in words, I'm on the wrong side. Put up your armor, pick your target, hold your guard up, keep your heart safe, use your head and push them far away and don't shoot. 
Cool. It sounds to me like uh, you um, did you did you kind of tune that vocal up a bit higher than than it was? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to put more um, like uh, distortion effect, but I didn't have time to to do it. And it's a bit too high. It's just uh, like ten cent too high. But yeah. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. But it's good. You kind of some quite sort of adventurous chords at the, at, the, at the start of that as well. It's really cool. Uh -huh. thanks. But yeah, thanks everyone. Great work. Really, really good. And uh, like I said, if you could maybe think about a um, a radio edit of your track uh, over the next couple of days, that'd be cool. Um, if you get any time uh, between uh, you know, your, your chat hangout with VT and everything that's coming up. So um, great, thanks a lot. So uh, what we've been doing today is using uh, and editing vocals on a dance track. If you'd like to learn more about this and a host of other techniques, tips and workflow secrets designed to help you finish your productions to professional standard, please head over to the full length electronic music composition course on our website at www.pointblankonline.net forward slash electronic dash music dash composition. And as ever, I'm going to quickly show you that now. Um, here we go. This is the course. We're into week four now, lesson four. And you can see here, track building, adding parts um, and arranging. There's a whole load of videos here, uh, extending the arrangements. So uh, what I did with this is basically in the, in the course is I uh, went re right from the start of a track, uh, the conception of a track, and I saw it right through to the end. So I started off and I used an a cappella, um, and then I started off um, making a radio edit, and then I went down the route of, of extending it out into a longer version, which is kind of what we've been talking about today. Um, so, yeah, if you head over to the website and check that out. Um, if you're watching this Academy series and want to join us on a full course, remember to use this discount code for 10% off. So that brings us to the end of today's session. As I mentioned earlier, we have a very special guest coming in tomorrow. To many, he's the godfather of dance music. To others, he's the creator of the world famous Stutter Edit, so well loved in dance music today. He's known for his film scores, including Monster and The Fast and the Furious, as well as masterpieces such as Skylarking, Flaming June, Must Be The Love, and collaborations with Tiesto, Armin Van Buren, and many more. Don't miss the one and only BT, here with us on Tuesday, 3 p.m. UK time. That's it for today. See you tomorrow live and direct at 3 p.m. UK time. In the meantime, you can get access to loads of free tutorials by subscribing to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash point blank online. See you later. Bye. <laughs>